Vamos todos. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands to the Lord. Let's worship Jesus. Let's worship him. Worship him. Father, we adore you, Lord. We worship you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We give you all the praise, all the glory tonight. Somebody worship him. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated tonight. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard somebody talking Caribbean just now. So I think I can talk African. Abari, Abari. <laughs> you gotta say Nzuri. Abari. Good. Mambo. <laughs> somebody worship the Lord. Amen, amen. Yeah, it's crazy in Florida, amen. We got all kind of nations there in the revival there, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God and it's revival every night. Right now we're in 430 night. 430 days of revival. Street preaching, night service, revival after revival, baptisms, membership, promotions, increase, housing. It's amazing. You know, Florida is known to have, you know, lower minimum wage and wage discrepancies, but not since we've been there. God is doing something in Florida. Some folks are testifying that when they were, before they came, they didn't want to come because of that very same thing. But now they are making the same with additional promotions. Working less hours. Hallelujah. They're doing less and making more. That's what happened when you, you, you stand in the promised land. Somebody say amen. amen. One person came there and they said when they were here, they fought for Saturdays and Sundays for almost the entire of the duration of their employment. And they came to Florida and they never work a Saturday or a Sunday. Making the same amount. When you step into God's providence, he does something special for you. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, if you didn't come yet, don't feel bad. Just plan to come when I'm leaving. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I greet you all. Thank God for Apostle Collins. Amen. He's, he's a part of us. We see him all the time. Amen. You see, he's smart. At least he comes often. Amen. So we don't know where he lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't know where he lives because he comes so often. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's good to be in the mother church. Amen. It feels good to be here and we see the power of God on your people. Amen. Continue cleaving to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue pressing and staying close to the altar. Staying close to the vision. Don't, make, don't let anything cause you to falter. Now waver. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles to the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. Ruth chapter 1. Hallelujah. Somebody get the confirmation. I hear somebody worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah, I've got my mind made up. And I won't turn it back. Because I'm going to see my Jesus someday. see my Jesus someday. Thank you. I see the clock, the clock is running. <laughs> it's not concert tonight. Amen. <laughs> Our in-gathering is next Friday. 
So tell everybody, you know, we made room for you. Our in gathering is now the 29th, Friday, so we made room for all of you. Amen. Ruth chapter 1, I'm going to be reading from verse 12. The Bible says, Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I say, if I should say, I have hope. If I should have an husband also tonight and should also bear sons tonight, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye say, would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me am I in the right verse you hear that she said the hand of the Lord is gone out against me that would discourage anybody anybody told me that I, I probably would leave them but something going on in this verse let's read the next one 14 and they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. And Ruth claved unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people. And unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Many societies have a tradition in kissing. Yeah, they, they kiss as a greeting, you know. I used to work several years ago for, for the French company. And every time they see me, they wanted to kiss me two times. I'm telling you, this is the life of a believer. And, you know, you try to appease them, you know. But one day, one person tried to go in the middle. And I said, all right, that's it, it's over. I'm going back to my old tradition. The American way, the Brooklyn way, you get a fist bump. Yeah, you just get in a fist bump from now on. I have a lovely wife, she used to give me food every day. I think she knew what she was doing. I can't be distracted, amen. So I, I decide, but you know, there's many of them does that. Russia and all of them that is war now, when they kiss, they kiss three times. Croatia, Sylvania, you know, English too. A lot of them, they greet as kiss. Amen. Hallelujah. There's one country called Ireland, and they got a kissing divination. There's a there's a certain wall over there. I'm not telling you the name for you to look it up and go study nothing. <laughs> that they, they let down people in like a, a, a crevice, you know, and they put them down head first. Head first, and they hold their feet and let them down to the bottom, and they'll kiss a certain part on that stone because of whatever luck or whatever, you know. <laughs> and it happened until one man fell and died. So they decide to do a different kind of way and they put metal rails so that they can hold on while they're letting them down. All kind of foolishness. But look at your neighbor and tell him it's not the kiss. It's the clave. It's not the kiss. It's the clave. The Bible talks about Orpah and Ruth being the daughters to Naomi. And Naomi felt like God turned against her. So much that her sons that she bore died. And Oprah was married to one and, Nayo, and Ruth was married to the other, but they died. And she was grieved and she told them, stop following me. I don't have any more children in my womb for you. Are you going to wait? Are you going to wait for me? Are you going to wait until I get married again and have children? And are you going to wait until they be grown? Then you marry them and have your own children? Leave me alone. 
Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Oprah kissed her and left. But Ruth clave. You see it in the scripture, C-L-A-V-E. Clave is just the past tense of cleave. Cleave means to stick to fast. I'm, cle I'm claving to the altar. You got to cleave. Somebody say amen. In this end time revival, make up your mind, is it a kiss or is it a cleave? This revival comes to ask you the question, are you going to kiss and leave? Or are you going to cleave? Ask your neighbor, are you going to kiss and leave? Or are you going to cleave? Tonight, tell him again, it's not about the kiss. It's about cleaving. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because Ruth was smart and cleave, the Bible says a lot of things happen. She said, she said, ah, I'm not, ah, I'm leaving Moab. I'm not going back there. I'm coming with you. Because she cleave, she learned a lot from Naomi that she would not have learned. You're not saying amen enough. She learned a great deal. Hallelujah. Woo. My God, she even became popular. You're not saying amen enough. The Bible says when Naomi went back to her hometown, Bethel, Bethlehem, that the whole city came out to meet her. That's how she was popular. So imagine they come out and see this damsel with her automatic popularity. Somebody say amen. And the Bible said that Ruth said something to Naomi. I'm going to get there. But before I get there, she cleaved. And because she cleaved, she went with Naomi. And when she went with Naomi, hallelujah, she went to a place back home to the mother branch. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No matter what we do in Florida, apostle have to come back to the mother branch. You're not saying amen enough. Glory be to God. And she went back. And when she went back, something began to turn. Because now Naomi began to teach her on a different level. Because Naomi saw that she's cleaving. There's some things you're not going to get until you cleave. You're not saying amen enough. You can come to church all you want. But there's a deeper learning when you cleave the bible said now nah, nah, root begin to cleave and she said okay sit down here my child this is what you're gonna do you're gonna go down there and you're going to go to a certain vineyard a certain farmland god almighty that's what we're doing in florida we went to a certain farmland and he said listen you're gonna do this and do that that's what we did in florida when we went there look impossible but they told us you gotta open up branches we said branches with what people but we still cleave. So we just open. And the more we open is the more they got filled. Same thing happened to Ruth. Because she didn't kiss and leave. She cleaved to the visionary. And she said I'm not leaving. My God Almighty. And she began to cleave. She began to clean in a man. Named Boaz Vineyard. Oh God Almighty. And as she gleaned. The man came home. The Bible said he was a wealthy man. In the city. And when he, How come a wealthy man is not married? Because wealthy men focus on business. Have you ever met a businessman? A rich businessman? I've met several. And they take one minute and talk about sports and news. The other 99 is pure business. It's what the business. So when you find man like Jesus, he said that he was young. And his mother said, ah, we was looking for you inside of the playhouse. But he said, mm, don't you know, I'm about my father. Business. The church, this way you're sitting, is not just to come and sit. It's a business for God. The more you cleave, the more you get. And the Bible says she begin to catch Boaz's eye. And Boaz say, hey, 
to his reapers. Boaz said, who is that damsel? That cute girl, in other words. Hallelujah. Gleaning, picking up the scraps. And they said, oh, hallelujah. It is Ruth. She came back from Moab with Naomi. Let me tell you about Moab. Moab was the son of Lot. In other words, Moab was an incest born son. A God maybe Ruth knew that and learned that this thing I need to get out of this place because there are some cities they got names but if you look at the background there's some terrible connection and Ruth said I gotta leave and she left place and she came with Naomi I got and Boaz met her I got and Boaz said to the reapers don't just give her clean just throw off some stuff let her get some handful that is purpose for her hallelujah don't touch her don't offend her don't say nothing to her matter of fact because she cleaved to them the vision the man said listen you're gonna eat at my table you're not saying amen enough when you're cleave to God when you clean to the vision God will take you from the prison to the palace from the barnyard to the host table it's not about the kiss it's about the cleave all that I'm saying did not happen to Orpah because she cleave she, she leave she kiss and you're getting it now. So I can conclude the sermon in nine minutes. No, it's easy now. You have to understand how to cleave. You have to cleave to the vision. Cleave to the visionary. Reboshanda commander. The Bible said in Ruth 116, Ruth said, Ah, entreat me not to leave thee. I feel like preaching the sermon. Ah, oh God, entreat me not to return from following after thee. Whether thou goest, I will go. Anybody here want to say that tonight? Where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I'll lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God shall be the, my God. But she didn't stop there. She had more words for the visionary. She said in verse 17, Where thou diest, I will die. That's some serious cleaving. I don't want you on my sight. Anybody remember Elisha? Elisha don't get a lot of reputation. Because a lot of theologians will say, Elisha, he, you know, he wasn't like Elijah. He didn't share the anointing. Matter of fact, he died with it. But by right, he never had somebody like himself following him. Elisha had Gehazi. And we all learn that Gehazi was licky licky. I mean, he loved, he loved stuff. He loved vanity. So guess what? Elisha was a very upset man. <laughs> He had some servants that upset him sometimes. You're not saying, man. But he knew how to cleave. He knew how to cleave to his leader. The Bible said when Elijah was going to be taken, he stuck closer. He knew that when the older he get, it's the more I cleave closer. You're not saying amen enough. More time, what happened in the earth, the older the visionary get, is the farer they go. Can I talk to you, somebody? Look at your neighbor and say, not about the kiss. It's about the cleave. She said, I ain't going nowhere. No matter what you do, you can't get rid of me. I know that there's something about you. My God, because I married you, I got to leave my incestuous background. My life has changed. Oh, yeah. since I met you, everything changed. My mind has made up and I won't turn back. I was a slave in sin when Jesus bought me. So I'm no longer going back. I'm not going back to sinning. I'm not going back to adultery. I'm not going back to fornicate. You touched my life. You touch my life i'm gonna live with you i'm gonna die with you i'm gonna go with you it's not about the kiss it's about the cleave she said you affected me greatly if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be here 
so don't expect me to follow nobody else entreat me not to leave thee where shall I go but to the Lord somebody gotta say it say Lord where shall I go it's not about the kiss in other words she said whatever you do I'm doing your enemies are my enemies if your enemies is my daddy now he's my enemy too vision will get you to do some stuff uh, that blood can't do that biology can't do you're not saying amen enough when you got vision it's better than intercourse with your wife when you got vision it's better than honey in your tea when you got vision it's better than having a big house a big car because you can have all these but when you don't have jesus the bible said what does it profit a man to gain it's not about the kiss it's about the cleaving proverbs 27 verse 6 faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful kisses can be very deceitful that's why that man in ireland trying to go down to kiss the rock fell and die she said no matter what you do if you say if you don't eat pork i'm not eating pork i used to not eat pork but my leader eat pork so i eat pork too I used to eat fish, but he eats fish, I eat fish too. I love me a snapper right now. You steam a snapper, give me a oh man. In seconds it'll be gone. One time I used to love rice so much, the rice would be gone first. And I leave the snapper for later. No, not now. I, I, I begin to see. I begin to see. When you cleave, you begin to see. <laughs> she said, she said, if you're a non juke I'm non juke too. I'm using words that they can't take it offline. Juke, J O O K. If she don't want, if he not taking a juke, I ain't taking a juke neither. If he don't wear wooden, but I ain't gonna wear. You better say, man, say it's not about the kiss, it's about the cleave. You have to cleave to get it. You have to cleave to get it. Jesus was richer than any man you can even put together with all the rich men on earth. But where was he born? In a manger. Some disciples thought he was a money thing like Judas. And the Bible said he tried to sell him out. But what happened? He committed suicide. Because the vision is bigger than currency. You're not saying amen enough. Can I talk to your church tonight? It's not about the kiss. It's about the cleave. There was a disciple. Every time you find him, he was leaning on Jesus. And he made the Bible for good things. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Come on now. Where's Judas? I don't see it. Not even in the back of the Bible. I don't see Judas in the Bible. I don't see a book, Judas. So be careful or you want to cleave to some other teachings. When you get saved, don't let them come and tell you about apocrypha. Lost books of this and blessed. You don't need it. If you didn't need it, you wouldn't be saved. Come on, somebody. Oh, God. It's not about the kiss, man. It's about the cleave. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not about the kiss. It's about the cleave. Mark 14, 43. And immediately while he yet spake, come at Judas, one of the twelve with a great multitude with swords and staves watch this now from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders notice the word elders 44 and he that betrayed him had given them a token watch this now you listening to the bible saying whosoever i shall kiss that is the same is he it's not about the kiss 
It's not about the kiss, church. Judas came and said, anybody I kiss, take him away safely. Like he became a chief over in the army, overnight. Oh my God. John, in John it says, the reason why Judas could find Jesus because even though he was close, he knew where Jesus went off times with the disciples. So he wasn't a stranger, brother. So it's not about the kiss because he did kiss Jesus. If he didn't know him, he couldn't kiss him. It's not about the kiss. It's about the cleave. God tell me to tell you, look at your neighbor and say cleave and receive. Say cleave and receive. Come on. I have some more to tell you. I, I, I think the Lord took it off my notes because I can't find it. And it's one minute left. So I think God is telling me it's time now. But there's a man named Sheba that rose up against David. And Sheba began to stir the people against David. He began to do what he does and stir the people. But the Bible said that the men of Judah clave to David. And the Bible said that, oh God Almighty, oh God, that the, the captain for David named Joab got up, oh God Almighty, and found Sheba. And he was pressing hard after Sheba. And they couldn't find him. And they went to a city named Abel, where they hid him. And they began to put some things beside the city to push it down, man of God. They said, hey, you don't want to let him out? We're going to push it down when you fight against vision. So some things will happen to you, Akata. Remember, they were going to push down the whole city. And the Bible says a wise woman. Now I know why so much woman in church. The Bible says a wise woman shouted. I said, Joab, what are you doing? I'm a wise woman in this building. We love Israel. We love the tribes of God. So why are you trying to kill us? And Joab said, indeed, you're wise. I'm not trying to kill you, but there's somebody in your city that you're hiding in the city. And the woman said, say the name. And he said the name, Sheba from Mount Ephraim. You know what the woman did? The woman said, all right, I'm going to test your words. Sometimes you must look at your neighbor. I said, I'm going to test your words. Come on, somebody. As a believer, you must have words that have tangibility. Somebody say, amen. And she go in the city and find Sheba and cut off his head. And after she cut off his head, they threw his body outside. Because they still weren't sure if Joab was all right. So when they threw him outside, Joab said, all right, we're leaving. It's over. Stand up on your feet. The ceremony is over. <laughs> My conclusion is not about a kiss. It's about a cleave. You have to cleave to receive. I can tell you a lot more that Ruth got. Ruth got another husband because she cleave. Some folks looking for a husband don't leave. Just cleave. God gonna give you, but make sure you cleave like root. Make sure you come and glean. Come on, somebody. Follow the leader. If somebody brought you to church and you get saved in the church and they work in the church, if they put the flowers like this, go after them and put it like that too. I tell you this, if you apply these things, the Bible said, my promises are yea and amen. Can I tell you something about God? Whatever he say, he gonna do the Lord said in 30 days the mortgage right here gonna be paid off and in 30 days it was over Joab was a mighty man of God for David but he was overly zealous for himself because when David said I'm not gonna touch Saul he was glad to kill Saul's captain Abner let me tell you what happened and then another David's son rose up son you better watch it David's son rose up against David Absalom and David was mourning oh God Almighty I can't finish this sermon. and David was mourning and and the same Joab after sin sorry man said no you can't do that you lose the people and he helped him greatly because Absalom died but it was same Joab who killed Absalom 
And guess what? Absalom had a captain. David's nephew. And I'm talking about the family now. And David's nephew. <coughs> Amasa. Amasa became the captain for Absalom. And when, when Absalom died. Amasa came to David and said, hey man, I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought God had left you and went to Absalom. So he was just, he was sincere in his apology. And David said, what am I to do with you? You're my brother, you're my family. I can't kill you. Just go and be the captain still. Come on. But the same Joab, kill Amasa. He said, you was the enemy for David. He was zealous for David, or so it seems. But when David died, we saw that it wasn't that. Some people will stay close to the visionary because of what they can get. Because when they were close to the visionary, he got some things. He got the popularity. So when David was getting hold now, Adonijah get up and say, I'm the king. And they conferred with him. And they begin to say he's king. Oh my God. He began to turn against David because David was old and stricken in age. But they don't understand vision. The vision still would come back and haunt him because they went for him. When David got up with the prophet Nathan and went to him and said, Your wife Bathsheba, son, is the king. You said it. He said, Yes, sir, it is so. And they proclaim Solomon to be king. And when Solomon became king, church, they realized that Adonijah didn't just want the kingdom, he wanted to kill Bathsheba. He had blood on his mind. You gotta be careful when you got blood on your mind. And the Bible says that Solomon remember his dad's words. He remembered his dad's words. And he said, you know what? There's some men you gotta deal with. You gotta follow the visionary. Even when he leave, you have to stay close to the words. You have to stay close to the words. You have to understand vision. It's not play stuff. We won't even leave. Stick to the vision for world revival. So Solomon sent men to kill Joab, the mighty killer. But you know he had a little, he had a little head. He went to the altar. And he hold on to the altar and said, I ain't coming out there. If you want to kill me, you have to kill me inside. That's the only thing I love about Joab. <laughs> He went to church and died. <laughs> Woo! But he turned against David. The kiss is not it. It's the cleave. The vision is bigger than the man. The vision is bigger than the man. It's not about the man. It's about the vision. God bless you tonight. My time is up. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Just remain standing as we welcome, amen, our visionary bishop, Dr. K.D. Collins, as he comes unto us. Receive him at this time. Hallelujah. Well, shall I? 